was there where people have been in the dark for some time, and it sort of goes on like that. Tony? Maurice, without power since the Con Ed substation up the street blew up uh, at the height of the storm on Monday. People without power, but they're certainly not feeling powerless. They're coming together in a collective way. We're right outside the famous C Squat on C on Avenue C. This was a building that was taken over by squatters in the 70s. People are now in the process of buying it uh, legally and occupying it legally. And speaking of Occupy, it's almost as if the Occupy Wall Street encampment has moved from Zuccotti Park in the fall of 2011 now to uh, the Lower East Side in 2012. People are barbecuing, they're making salads over here, they're giving away food that people would otherwise be throwing away, they're trying to keep it from going to waste. Over here is one of the famous energy cycles from Occupy Wall Street now being used here to pedal power and generate power for people who are bringing their cell phones here to be charged. So some fun here on the street, but a little bit more serious situation up Avenue you see at a building called Haven Plaza. People are without power. They got some bad news about when they would get power back. People walking up and down 27 stories to go about their lives, including an elderly gentleman I talked to earlier today named Nicholas Pappas. They're shaking. They're shaking badly. 86-year-old Nicholas Pappas, with flashlight in hand, managed to walk down 21 stories from his Haven Plaza apartment. We walked up to the 14th floor to check on David Rubin, who uses a wheelchair and is pretty much stuck at home. What's it been like living without power since Monday night? Like hell. It's hard. Rubin says he's living on canned goods that he's heating on the gas stove, but struggling with his neighbors to obtain enough water to cover basic needs. You can't flush toilets, sinks full of dishes becomes a way you know comes a big problem it is so dark and eerie wandering the hallways of this building neighbors are being very wary you hear signs of life behind a door you knock identify yourself but people won't come to the door they don't want to open it for a stranger down on the eighth floor daniel irizari says no power means big problems just making it day by day he cares for a daughter who's diabetic and autistic their food situation is less than optimal. How are you with spam? Uh, well, it's not the most uh, healthiest thing to eat, but it works. It works. I just, um, what can you do? It's a disaster, right? <laughs> got to muddle through. That's right. Got to trek through it, and that's it. And they're getting through it together. Jose Best spends his days checking on his neighbors. They're running up and down, I would at least say about six, ten times a day for water. Mm. We gotta, gotta wash dishes after we cook. So been tough. Yes, it has. But we gotta deal with it. We're New Yorkers. The New Yorkers who live in that building got some bad news after we shot that report. A letter from management, Luis Lopez is one of the residents there, basically telling you even after Con Ed restores power to the building, you might not be able to have lights and power there for a week because of damage in the basement. That is correct, and uh, I'm appealing to the Archdiocese of New York. Which owns the building, that but it's correct. managed by a different company. Wavecrest Management. The fact is we got a notification about 2.30 this afternoon after we were told by the local politicians and Con Ed that service will be restored without the weekend, like everybody else, like our neighbors. We will not get service to possibly up to two weeks because of a malfunctioning generator, which is my understanding they just started recently to just uh, work on. Yeah, your wife is home. So from brain cancer. Right. My wife has cancer, and the fact is she had surgery. She was supposed to have surgery yesterday, which was postponed for Monday, and she's in bad shape. She has stage four. I'm juggling that. We have also tenants who have cancer for seniors. We're hurting bad. Yeah. My appeal is please, the archdiocese, please help us. They're making an appeal to the archdiocese of New York, which owns the building. It's managed by a company on behalf of the archdiocese. People can't imagine getting power back to this neighborhood on Friday or Saturday, but not not being able to really enjoy their homes for another week or two after that, but the recommendation from the management company is move out and we'll tell you when you can move back. On the Lower East Side, Tony Aiello, CBS 2 News. Yeah, easier said than done, I'm sure, Tony. Thank you. you got to wonder, when are these people going to catch a break? All right, we're going to continue um, to monitor the situation. And by the way, here are the latest on the power outages around the tri-state area. 781,000 PSE&G customers are without electricity. JCPNL.